In this course so far, we have looked at how to use different objects such as a range object and we have done something with those objects such as use the copy method of the range object to copy the value from a cell. Now in this video, let's understand the architecture behind the object hierarchical setup. How are we actually able to gain access to objects? The answer is via the object library. Excel enables the references to certain libraries by default. Let's check out what those are. So we are in the VB editor, go to tools, references. In the reference dialog box, we can see all the libraries that are registered with the operating system. Four libraries have been already selected by default. These are the libraries for VBA, Excel, OLE Automation and Microsoft Office. These libraries give us access to a collection of classes available under each of them. And a class is a blueprint that defines the structure of an object. For example, the range object is defined by a range class which is made available via the Excel library. So the point here is that the set of objects that we have access to are governed by the libraries that are selected here in the references dialog box. And from within Excel, we can even write code to manipulate other applications such as PowerPoint. For example, we can create a chart in Excel and then transfer it to a slide in PowerPoint and then adjust the properties of that PowerPoint slide. To do this, we would need to add a reference to the PowerPoint object library, which we could find here by scrolling down to the Microsoft PowerPoint object library. All we would need to do is add a tick mark and then click OK. Let's break away from the discussion and do a quick demo. Let's build some code to send out an Outlook email. For this, we will need access to the objects within the Outlook library. First, let's add a reference to the Outlook object library. Tools, References, scroll down till we see Microsoft and then mark a tick against Outlook object library. Click OK. Let's create a sub. Enter, tab. We will use the Outlook object library to create an email object and then update the various properties of the email such as subject and body. Since we need to update multiple properties, we can use the with statement. We start the with statement with the keyword with. Then we need to provide the object that we want to manipulate, which is the Outlook email. But a blank email doesn't exist yet. We need to create it. This is the equivalent of going into Outlook and hitting the new email button. We will use a fully qualified reference for the object, which starts with the library Outlook. Dot. We can see we have access to IntelliSense. Make a note of this as we will refer back to IntelliSense for external libraries shortly. Now similar to Excel, the topmost object in Outlook is the application object. So application dot, then we will use the create item method to create a new email object. Add an open bracket. The create item method requires an additional argument which signifies what Outlook item that we want to create. The list that we see here is called an enumeration. It is a list of fixed or constant values, each of which signifies a separate Outlook item. We need to choose the OL mail item, which represents an email object. Close bracket. And first let's end the with statement. Enter, enter, end with. Go back to the middle of the code. Press a tab since we are entering a new logic level. Let's fill in our first property, dot. Normally, within a with statement, when we press a dot here, we should get IntelliSense, giving us a list of members under the mail item object. However, since the create item method returns a generic object, we can't access IntelliSense. We will dive deeper into this issue later on in this video. But for now, we'll need to type in the code manually. First is the to property. We will assign a value to it using the assignment operator, which is the equal to sign. We can enter a dummy email address, which is a text, so it needs to go within double quotes. Next is the subject property. And let's add one line in the body of the email. We can send this email using the send method. So just dot send. But I will comment out this method for now, so an apostrophe. While testing the sending of emails, I will recommend first just displaying the email to verify that all the values are populating correctly. So we will use the display method instead. So dot display. And that's the code. Let's run it. 
I will recommend having Outlook open, though it's not necessary, and F5 to run the macro. And our email gets displayed with all the values populated correctly. And this is just one way to refer to objects in external libraries. We will look at other ways in the next chapter when we talk about object variables. And one last point, when referring to objects within the Excel object library, we don't need to add the Excel library name. But we did so when referring to Outlook objects. Why? That's because the application object is common between the Excel and Outlook object model. Excel.application and Outlook.application both refer to different hierarchies. But if we simply type in the word application, VBA will assume that we mean Excel.application. So we can see here that these properties active chart, active cell, active sheet are all properties of the Excel object model. To find out why, let's go to tools and references. We can see here that the Outlook object library is placed below the Excel object library. And VBA uses this sequence to evaluate where the application object is found first, which is the Excel library, and then assumes that it belongs to that library. If we want to specifically refer to the application object within Outlook, we need to fully qualify the reference by mentioning the name of the Outlook library, which is Outlook. Okay, so let's get back to the discussion on object libraries. Now, we can use objects without enabling a reference to the parent libraries. This is called late binding. However, enabling a reference that is adding a check mark against a library, which is also called early binding, has two benefits. It gives us access to IntelliSense, which is the helpful drop-down list that shows up whenever we press dot against an object in our code. And secondly, it makes our code run faster. We will talk more about early and late binding in our lesson on object variables. Next, let's learn to explore the objects that are available within these libraries using the object browser. Hit cancel. We can come to the standard toolbar and click on the object browser icon or use the shortcut key F2. On the top left corner of the object browser window, click on the first drop down box. We see each of the four libraries that we had referenced earlier. We have Excel, Office, OLE Automation, and VBA. We also have the option for VBA project, which is our current workbook. Let's select Excel and come down to the window named Classes. This window shows all the classes available to us within the Excel library. We can scroll down and look for the range class. Click on it. In the below window, it says it's a range class, which is a member of the Excel library. And within the window to the right, we have a list of available methods and properties defined under the range class. Properties have the hand and envelope icon, while methods have the flying book icon. The way you see members might be different than my view. This is because I've grouped the members to show properties and methods together and then alphabetically in each group. You can do this by right clicking on the range class and selecting group members. So now I've ungrouped it. So the entire list is alphabetical and I'll switch back to my old view which is group by members. Let's scroll down to the copy function, click on it. We can see that the definition for the copy function shows that it takes one optional parameter called destination. And if you don't want to scroll through and just zero in on a method or property, you can always search for it directly. Turn the selection back to all libraries. In the second drop down window, we can type in copy and click enter or the binoculars icon. In the window below, we get a search results for classes and members containing the word copy. But even for the keyword copy, there are a lot of results. That is because copy as a method exists on different objects. You can copy a cell, copy a chart, etc. We want to look for the copy method related to the range object. So let's search for the range class in the middle column and let's click on copy. Our classes window has selected the range class in dotted lines and the members window has selected the copy method in dotted lines. I would recommend spending some time to explore the object browser. It's good to study the relationships between various objects, but for querying individual methods and properties, I would still suggest using the online help by pressing F1 on the object name. So for example, let's come to the image window, press a question mark, type in range and hit F1 and click on the range object to come to the related Microsoft Learn Help page. 
this information is simply more descriptive and intuitive. We have pretty much concluded our discussion on the Excel object model. But there is one point that I want to revisit, which is the item property of the collection object. The common way to reference an item within a collection, so the workbook within a workbook's collection, is to directly reference it using the item name, or in this case, the workbook name. But we are relying on the item property being default to complete our syntax. What this would really look like would be item after the workbooks collection and item after the worksheets collection. It's absolutely not necessary to mention this, but it is kind of relevant to our discussion on the object browser. For example, let's head back to the object browser. Let's select the workbooks class. Now we know that the workbooks collection returns a workbook object, but we can't see the workbook object listed in the members section. Has it been missed out? No. If we click on the item property, we can see in the window below that it returns a workbook object. And if we're using the object browser to navigate our way around the object hierarchy, we could click on the workbook object hyperlink, which will take us to the workbook class. And then we could scroll down to the worksheets collection and click on the returned object, which is sheets. Then we go to the sheets class, which represents a sheets collection. If we need to go further down the hierarchy, we need to click on the item property again, which is where the link finally breaks. The sheets collection returns a generic object and not a worksheet object. And the worksheets collection also returns a generic object. This is the reason why IntelliSense stops working for us when we place a dot against the sheet object. And as a workaround, we can directly reference the worksheet using its code name. And that's just a little bit of extra geeky knowledge. Good to know, but not necessarily something that we will use. And that's it for this lesson on the object library and the object browser. This is also the end of chapter 2, where we learned all about the object model. In the next chapter, we will learn about the VBL language itself by focusing on concepts such as variables, loops, and error handling.